name is Lily Nguyen, and I'm currently a PhD student at UCLA, and I'm researching yeah. the, the cultural aspects of technology here in Vietnam. So it's Facebook is actually blocked here. It's, it's, does it matter? It's pseudo-blocked, uh, meaning that the government likes to say that it's not blocked, but everybody more or less understands it to be something that is blocked. But the, the people here can figure out ways of going around it quite easily, and it's actually, if you talk to any kid or any teenager, they're like, oh, it's really easy, you just have to do, like, you know, they're, they're, they're really savvy, actually, because of the circumstances that make them savvy. So for an average uh, Vietnamese teenager, like, what are their, what are their technology habits? Um, definitely texting, obviously downloading music, really horrible ringtones, it's really, it's actually the horrible ringtone is a really key feature if you're just kind of like walking around the city, um, and that I think applies to both kids and adults, um, lots of songs, um, definitely lots of social networking going on, there's lots of, um, I know the government recently tried to, they built out and released their own kind of social network as a competitor to like Facebook or um, MySpace, I don't think people are signing up a lot for that, there's a a native um, Vietnamese website. It's Zing, I think. I think that's what it's called. Um, it's a native uh, by a domestic software company network, a social networking site. Um, and I think their habits are just like you know anywhere else in terms of like texting, um, IMing, social networking, reading lots of blogs. Maybe they don't. They're not quite about um, buying online yet. But I think there's a lot of people right now who want to try and like get into the kind of e-retail space. And why, why do you think that maybe online purchasing hasn't picked up here? Maybe because it's not so safe or they don't feel as secure with the internet yet or it's not new or hasn't been around long enough maybe? I don't think there's a good infrastructure for monetary financial transactions. I mean, the Vietnamese have a habit of doing things in cash, you know, and so there's not a real good um, uh, financial infrastructure in terms, like, at a cultural level in terms of getting people to do financial transactions under their credit. Um, so much happens face to face and there's still so much bargaining when you go and buy stuff here that, I mean, you only, like, the idea of fixed prices is something that's still quite new, actually. You know, like a no bargaining. So what about something like like eBay where you're bidding for the cheap price? I don't, I don't, you know, maybe something like eBay could come out. A lot of people are trying to get around the problem of like actual like payments and transactions. So if you can't make a payment like through um, some kind of online like PayPal, a lot of people throw out the idea of like a cash and delivery type thing. You know, the America used to have that before we had credit cards. You bought something, somebody comes, and then you make the payment to them, and then they go back and they kind of give you, then they queue up the whole delivery of a product or something like that. So. And for hardware, what, what, what are we kind of seeing? Um, hardware, I guess, I mean, you see a lot of netbooks, obviously, a lot of like Nokia phones, a lot of iPhones. It's actually really amazing. You see tons of iPhones, you see knockoff iPhones. And you know, a lot of the iPhones here, I think, are actually like, Friends of friends, like literally bringing them over in suitcases and selling like used iPhones. I've actually brought over a couple of iPhones for people already, like like friends and like my relatives' friends. So it's kind of like it's really surprising how like the, I mean they I mean they're really 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 coveted and really popular. Mm. So, so. A lot of PDAs and stuff too. Oh.